In the last lecture, we discussed how the scientific consensus was undermined to delay or block climate change regulation. We looked at some of the climate change myths that have been used to promote doubt. We also identified some of the forms of denial that convinced the public to delay action on climate change and the cognitive biases that we all have that make us susceptible to these forms of denial. We noted a transition in argument from there is no problem to we aren't responsible to it's too expensive to fix. This transition amounts to moving the goalposts and has echoes of the argument used to convince you that I have an invisible, floating, heatless, incorporeal dragon in my garage under questioning by Professor Bettens during Lecture 3. This is, of course, the scenario discussed by Carl Sagan in his book, The Demon Haunted World. Whenever Professor Bettens identified a test to detect the dragon, I gave an argument as to why it would not work. I moved the goalposts. In the same way, climate change deniers have moved the goalposts as to what is required as evidence before we enact policies to mitigate climate change. In this lecture, I want to discuss the reliability of climate change predictions. How do we develop confidence in climate models? How do we estimate uncertainty in these predictions? What does the future look like? And for that matter, which future? The last question looks at the relationship between science and society, how science can inform public policy. Models are one of the ways in which scientists show understanding of a phenomenon. The mathematical models that incorporate our best understanding of the Earth system are expressed in the form of computer programs that are able to calculate climate and change in climate. These computer programs are known as climate models. These climate models use some of the world's most powerful supercomputers to calculate their predictions. If you read the summary for policymakers in the sixth assessment report of the IPCC, you will note that sometimes it refers to projections and at other times it refers to predictions. Projections are model-derived estimates of future climate. When a projection is branded most likely, it becomes a prediction. The reason for this difference is that many of the climate simulations calculated are for future scenarios that are seen as possible. A scenario is a coherent, internally consistent and plausible description of a possible future state of the world. Scenarios have a demographic, socio-political, economic and technological storyline. But perhaps we are getting a little ahead of ourselves. Before discussing these model projections, let's first discuss why we should have any confidence in them. This question of confidence is answered by testing models against past observations. Reproducing past observations is known as hindcasting. It is, of course, important that the model isn't tuned to reproduce past observations, because this would greatly limit the confidence we could have in any such model for forecasting the future. Models of past climate are what are known as initial value models. They are given an initial state, say the atmosphere of 1850 or 1870, and are then allowed to freely run forward in time. Once running, these climate models do not correct themselves using observations. Such a model should be able to reproduce random variations in the climate system. However, it will not be able to reproduce the observed changes in Earth's surface temperature. Although the model is free running, it does need to be forced by natural and anthropogenic changes. Natural forcings involve incorporating solar variations and volcanic activity. Anthropogenic forcings involve the changes in greenhouse gases, sulfur aerosols and land use. We have already seen the graphs of model calculations from the sixth assessment report. The figure here shows that there is good agreement with the observed temperature record and further makes the case that the increase in temperature can only be explained by anthropogenic forcings. Most importantly, 
the increasing atmospheric burden in greenhouse gases due to the burning of fossil fuels. Despite using some of the most powerful supercomputers on the planet, these climate models need to divide the planet up into grid cells to make the calculations more manageable. This means that at every step of the model through time, it calculates the average climate of each grid cell. However, there are many processes in the climate system and on the Earth's surface that occur on scales within a single cell. For example, the topography will be averaged across the whole grid cell in the model meaning it potentially overlooks the detail of any physical features such as mountains and valleys. Similarly, clouds can form and dissipate at scales that are very much smaller than a grid cell. To solve this problem, these variables are parameterized, meaning their values are defined in the computer code rather than being calculated by the model itself. This graphic shows some of the processes that are typically parameterized in models. Parameterizations may also be used as a simplification where a climate process isn't well understood. Parameterizations are one of the main sources of uncertainty in climate models. Each research group will approach the parameterization of a climate process in a slightly different way. Indeed, any particular research group may run their models with different parameterization packages. This means that the climate models in the IPCC reports give different answers even if they are initialized with the same climate state. The variance in the global average temperature from these different models gives us a sense of the uncertainty in the model calculations. This is why it is important not to rely on any one climate model or to describe any one model as being the best. These hindcast calculations give a great deal of confidence that climate models understand the climate processes that led to the increase in temperature since the Industrial Revolution. However, the future climate is expected to be still warmer it could be argued that this represents an extrapolation beyond the climate states in which we know, through hindcasted comparisons, that climate models perform well. To resolve this dilemma, scientists have constructed paleoclimate models that have attempted to reproduce the proxy temperature records for much earlier climates, when temperatures were vastly outside the envelope witnessed since the Industrial Revolution. This figure shows global average temperature variations through the last 400 million years as predicted by the Hadley Center Coupled Climate Model version 3, an early version of the climate model used by the UK Met Office. These numbers are compared with geologically derived estimates of temperature variability over the same period. Future projections of temperature change using different representative concentration pathways are shown in the right hand most panel. The fact that the same climate model is able to reproduce global average temperatures, especially during the Pleistocene period of glacial interglacial cycles during the last 800,000 years, is stunning. Studying paleoclimates gives us the opportunity to better understand the sensitivity of models to, among other things, changes in greenhouse gases and glacial and sea level histories. Many of the things that are critical to being able to predict future climate change. While the ability to simulate past and current climate does not guarantee the ability to simulate future climate, it is an important precursor. Today's climate models can accurately reproduce current climate and have been able to reproduce changes to the climate that have been observed in recent years. Many of the processes that drive the climate are well understood and the ability to capture these processes in models has been tested and is constantly being improved. Climate models are not perfect, but they are the best tool we have available for explaining the current behavior of our climate and predicting likely changes to the planet's future climate. Thanks for listening.